What's going on everybody, it's Dilmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm really excited to show you a little bit more about the Varjo VR3, which is the one that I'm holding in here. In the previous video, I tried to get it set up with my computer. Unfortunately, I didn't have all the specs that were necessary, which are the ones that I'm showing you in here. So to be able to run the Varjo VR, you do really need a lot of power. And that's no surprise because this device is meant for enterprises. This is not a consumer type device. So I ended up having to get an i7 processor, which is a little bit lower than what they recommend. I also got an RTX Titan, which is the video card that I think is the minimum requirement in order for you to be able to run the Varjo VR3. In addition to that, I also had to get a base station. So I thought that this device was gonna be able to cover basically the tracking, but unfortunately you have to get additional tracking it's really powerful you can you know the images look amazing which is what i'm going to be showing you in the next few minutes but you need to get additional tracking as far as like if you want to move around the room you're going to need trackers from htc which are the ones that i got i got the base station 2.0 so i had to get a couple of them there's actually one on that corner one on that other corner also one right behind me and one right behind me as well so I have base stations all around my room so that I can walk around my room and basically actually grab the controllers, which I also ended up getting the HTC controllers to be able to try some of the experiences that require controllers. You also have on this device an ultra Leap, a hand tracking device. So you can use hand tracking, but not all experiences support hand tracking, which is why I decided to get the controllers. I am wearing a VR3, so you can see that as I move my head around, everything moves on the view. So this is a headset view. I also have the base station here is that the device detected. It's also telling me that it can't detect my eyes, and that's because I'm not wearing it completely just yet. But I also see the controllers in here. And the other thing that is important here is the Steam VR, right? It tells me that it recognizes all of these devices. And one thing to know if you're trying to set this up is make sure that you, you set your base stations to different channels. There is actually a little hole behind a, each base station that allows you to put a clip in so that you can change the channel. And then I also pair the controllers. So if I were to move the controllers in here, I wanna make sure that I have them in view with the base stations, you can see that everything moves. So if I were to wear the device, which is what I'm gonna do, the IPD is going to try to basically adjust to my eyes. So it's telling me that I need to move it. There we go, I detected my eyes. And I'm just going to focus on the dot. You guys can see that everything is now. So before I got the base stations, I didn't have a floor. I didn't have controllers either. So that's why I, I can now see it detect the floor. And then it's actually pretty accurate to what the floor level is. So, cause I already went through the tracking you know, a process of that. And I also have the controllers in here, the buttons. So let me show you one of the experiences that it's available through the, the actual Varjo. So if we go here in my computer, I already downloaded a couple of experiences. Let's look at the Nordi architecture. So I'm gonna teleport to that area. And this just looks beautiful. I'm gonna look around. So we're looking at a house, right? I have the controllers in here. If I hit the trigger button, I can teleport to different areas. And I can also hear the beautiful sound of the rain. So I'm gonna go inside the house, see what I can find. There we go, we have a beautiful living room in here. And just looking around. And again, the tracking of the controllers is pretty accurate. I can also, you know, rotate if I want to rotate my view. Let's go ahead and go close to the couch. And I want you to pay attention to the couch and how accurate and, and beautiful everything looks, right? This device is a high-end device. It has a lot of power to you. So if you're an architect, if you're an enterprise, I mean, this, an architect in this case will be, this will be amazing, right? If you can actually decorate a house by, you know, by, by working on a device like this. So I'm just, we're looking now at the kitchen and let me see if I can go let me go ahead and go upstairs. So we're gonna go into the stairs. Here, here's a little office. They have a, a Mac computer. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate. I actually went down, here we go. Okay, so here's the, the office. Let's see what we have in here. Okay, so this looks pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and go, go out. I don't think I have any more floors in this house. 
So let's go ahead and go out there. There we go. It's a little couch in here, cozy, and a couch in there. So I think the thing to, to keep in mind though is like, we're looking at something that looks super realistic. And I think that is going to be a game changer to the virtual reality. So if you're thinking about, okay, this is cool, looks beautiful, but, but there's so many different use cases and applications that you can run with something like this in architecture, construction, you know, you're working on things like the imagine designing a car. Let's go ahead and look at the, the, the next experience, which I'm going to show you how, how amazing it looks. And it's going to be about actually inspecting a car, which is going to be a Volvo. Okay, so we're looking at right now is the experience of using mixed reality and virtual reality. In this case, I'm using virtual reality, but this demo works with also extended reality by using the XR3. So if we get close to the, the car right now, let me go ahead and see. Okay, there we go. So it's animating and you guys can see how I can also change the color if I wanted to. So I just, if I wanted to look at a gray color, I can, if I wanted to open the door, just to, you know, to see how the car looks like. I can, let's go ahead and change the color. I think I'm going to go with, with black. I'm gonna go hit, hit space. And this is what takes it to a completely new level, right? I can, you know, I can look around and now we are in the street. I can see how the car is, you know, positioned. And if I wanted to buy this car, I have a better look of how the car looks like. So I can also change the, the view and go back to the very beginning. I can now, you know, if I wanted to change it and also show the street again, I can do that. Let's go ahead and close and get close to the car. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hit, hit F1 and you're gonna see all the different options that we have in here. If I wanted to get closer to the car, just to get a better view, we can by just adjusting some of this. So I'm gonna get closer, maybe about here. Let's go ahead and change X and see how the car looks on the inside. So I'm looking at the car inside and it just looks beautiful, right? We have a better idea of the car. Let's change the color and see if it, there we go. I think I need to do that. There we go. I don't think I'm able to change the color for some reason in this case. So let me do that one more time. So what I'm gonna do, let's go ahead and get closer to it. So I'm gonna change the white value here and then let's change Z. Okay, that way I can get closer, much closer to it. And I'm gonna toggle the actual help menu. And you can see we're looking at the car from the inside, so you don't really have to go to the dealership. You can just look at it from here. And it just looks, looks amazing. So I'm gonna hit a space to see if I can change the actual color. There we go. So it changes the lighting as soon as I, you know, as soon as I remove all the environments because we're now not getting any of the materials and all the bouncing of the light with all the 3D shapes. But if I go back, you can see that now it changes. So that's how this demo looks like. Let's go ahead and take a look at a different demo. Okay, so this is one of my favorite demos because it has hand tracking capabilities. So if I wanted to move, let's say that I wanted to teleport to a different area, you can see how I can look at different art from, from these artist which is really beautiful so let's say that i wanted to use hand tracking to to actually draw and by the way this is the hand tracking with ultra lip which looks amazing so it'll give me different options in here if i wanted to let's say change the brush size i can change the brush size let's say that i wanted to paint perhaps with the red color i can do something like that and then what i can do now is i can use do a pinch to basically create a a shape so I can do something like this to create a shape I'm not an artist so I'm gonna do my best to to do something cool let's say we wanted to do you know some kind of a some kind of a balloon I can do something like that and then go into my shape in here and then maybe this one will just make it a little larger so we can see and I can just do something like that right so if I wanted to teleport to that area let's do teleport right there and then we can look back and see what I did for my R, which is not too beautiful, but you know, you get the idea. Let's see what else we can find up there. And I'm gonna do maybe, let's see, we have, you know, we're kind of like in the, in the upper floor and go back and there we go. So I think the tracking is not really, really accurate. And I think it's because I am, I am trying to record as I show you the experience, but let's go ahead and go back on that other area right there. 
you can see more lighting in here. And what I wanna do, this is just super interesting art. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, there we go, just so that I can look through the window. What if I go closer to the window? There we go. So we see that it's a little bit, looks like it's a little bit snowy, maybe it's the dirt, but, but that gives you an idea, right? So we have menu here showing up. If I wanted to remove everything, I can remove everything, which is everything that I just drew. So, which is fine. So now I should not be able to see the art that I just created. Okay, there's a couple more options in here that you can also use. So Calibre Eye Tracking, Action Button, Menu Button. If you wanted to see a menu here, also has the eye tracking capability to change the menu. Also the eye camera, we could look at it in here. You can see kind of like my hair, my hair, hair showing in here. And I can also look at analytics windows. So this is another window that I haven't really looked at, but it gives you a lot more information. So if you wanted to look at performance, how the device is performing, if we wanted to look at depth, you can also look at depth. Let me, I haven't tried some of these options. So this is all the first time for me. I want to do simulations, action buttons, screenshots, and a screen recording. This is the perfect place to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. The other things that you can do with these, with Vargio Base, is you can also, you know, there's additional options for the operating system. So if you want to disable headset buttons, eye tracking instructions, optimize performance, this is really good. And I'm doing this because my computer is not the, the most optimized computer for basically not the most beefy computer for this device. So I enable that just to give me a little bit of a better experience. Also, when you're setting up the tracking, you can use this to set up Steam VR to pair your devices, change different options. If you want to enable open VR, which is just required by some of the demos that we're looking at. And then, and yes, this looks really weird because you're looking at my head in here. <laughs> and then the Star Varjo Base computer startup, so you can do that, that's what I have. And then also allow eye tracking. The other things, these are all software updates. I, you know, I need to update the Varjo Base software. So these are some of the options and some troubleshooting. And again, it shows you in here that you are online and then all the different devices that we have. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about the Vargio VR3, please let me know in the comments. Also, keep in mind that I'm going to be doing videos on development with Vargio. We're going to be looking at the Vargio SDK in future videos and how to integrate it into HDRP projects. So I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much, guys.